How to calculate the relative abundance of isotopes. This is something we come across at GCSE. We learn that elements have isotopes and that we can calculate a weighted average, the relative atomic mass for an element, if we know how many isotopes there are, their relative or percentage abundance, and the mass number for each of them. When we look at our A-level textbooks, we see exactly the same information, and it all looks really, really straightforward. However, you come to your first exam question and they don't want you to calculate the relative atomic mass. What they require is for you to calculate the percentage abundance or the relative abundance of one or more isotopes or even perhaps a mass number. So how do we go about that? Using three different exam questions, I'm going to show you exactly how we can do this using a method that you can learn and is completely foolproof. OK, so let's take a look at the typical A-level style uh, percentage abundance uh, exam question, as opposed to what we've seen at GCSE. As always, the first thing is to have a good look at the question, identify what we have been asked to find out and what information we have in order to solve this problem. We have been asked to calculate the relative abundance of gallium-69. So, as always, we should set out the information that we have in a way that's going to be useful and not confusing later on. I'm going to come back to that point specifically. So I have two isotopes here. I have got gallium-69 and I've got gallium-71. In terms of the percentage abundance, uh, we don't know that for either isotope. Um, however, because we're working percentages, I know that whatever the value, the percentage abundance for gallium-69 is, then the value for gallium-71 must be 100 minus that. So in that case, I can say that I'm going to say that gallium-69 abundance is X. So the percentage abundance of gallium-71 must be 100 minus X. OK, so at GCSE, um, the general formula for finding the relative atomic mass for a set of isotopes was as follows. For each isotope, we would multiply the mass by the abundance. And we would do this for each of the isotopes that we had. And if we added those together, first of all, I'm just going to divide that by 100 because we're working in percentages. We would come out with the relative atomic mass. So let's use exactly the same formula that we're familiar with. My first isotope is gallium-69, so the mass is 69. Percentage abundance is X. For my second isotope, gallium-71, the mass is 71, and the percentage abundance is 100 minus X. And I have been given the value for the uh, relative atomic mass, that is 69.7. Again, we're working in percentages, so that should be divided by 100. And that's the first thing I need to undo. So what I'm going to do is to get rid of the 100 by multiplying each side. 100, so that cancels out, times 100. So at this point, I have 69x plus 71, 100 minus x equals 6970. I also need to simplify this expression here on the left-hand side. So 71 times 100 is 7100. 71 times x is minus 71x. I can now further simplify the left hand side here. So what I know is that uh, 69x minus 71x, so 69x minus 71x would be minus 2x, so minus 2x plus 7100 is equal to 6970. If I take 7100 from either side, that tells me that minus 2x equals minus 130, so x must equal 65. So x equals 65. x was the percentage abundance of the gallium-69 isotope, so 
the final answer is 65% because that was the um, isotope that we were asked to find the percentage abundance for in the question. The percentage abundance of the gallium-71 isotope, if we had been asked, would be 100 take away 65, so that would be 35%. But in this case, the answer that we'd put on the line is 65%. This was the main reason why I asked you to set out your information right at the beginning in a way that it was easy to go back to and figure out what we were doing. The um, chief examiner's report said specifically for this question that of those students who managed to work their way through the calculation, and they were a fairly small minority, quite a few of those then gave us the wrong answer. They actually put 35% down on the final uh, answer space rather than 65%. They got themselves into a muddle as opposed to where X, who X belonged to, whether X belonged to the 69 gallium isotope or the gallium 71. So key here is to set out our answer in a really clear and concise way so we know what we're doing and when we're doing it. OK, so let's have a look at a second example. Uh, this one has come from an AQA past paper. So uh, we have quite a lot of information here. First of all, um, we have four isotopes. Uh, we have got the mass number and the percentage, we've got the mass number and the percentage abundance for three of them. So let's put that information into a miniature table uh, so we know what we're doing. So we've got xenon129 and the percentage abundance is 28. We have got xenon131 and the percentage abundance is 25. Xenon132 and the percentage abundance is 27. And then the mystery, mystery isotope. Xenon, we don't know the mass number. And we also don't know the abundance. Those are the two things that we have been asked to calculate. So we've been asked to calculate the percentage abundance and the mass number for this particular isotope. Right, well, let's start with the percentage abundance. That's going to be very straightforward because we know that because we're working in percentages, they all have to add up to 100. So 28 plus 25 plus 27 comes to 80. So I know that the percentage abundance of my xenon isotope is 20.0. Once again, all the percentage abundances have been given to three significant figures. So I need to be careful to quote my own answer to three significant figures. So how about finding this mass number? Well, we're going to go back to exactly the same equation that we used in the previous example, which is for each isotope, essentially mass times percentage. And that would be, in this case, times four, because we've got four isotopes divided by 100, and that comes to our relative atomic mass, exactly the same as we used at GCSE. So let's take our first isotope. I've got xenon 129, so the mass is 129, and the percentage is 28. And I'm going to add that to the second one, so that's 131 times 25. This is how we're going to get weighted averages, which is essentially what our relative atomic mass is. 132 times 27. Um, for xenon, we know that we have um, m, essentially, for the mass, times 20. OK, and all of that is adding up to our relative atomic mass of 131.31. So let's figure that through. Let me just remember to have divided all of that by 100. So the first thing I'm going to do, just as I did in my last one, is to get rid of the 100. And I can do that by multiplying through on each side. And I would do the same to the right-hand side. 
in which case I am going to have um, a relative atomic mass of 13131 because I've multiplied it by 100. And at the same time, I'm going to figure out what each of these brackets are. So 129 times 28 is 3612. 131 times 25 is, what's going on here, 3275. 132 times 27 is 3564. And m times 20 would be... 20m. From then on, I can simplify quite further, so it would be add up these three numbers, it comes to 10,451 plus 20m equals 13131. I can then take 10,451 from each side so that I'm left with the value for 20m. So 20m therefore equals uh, 13131, take away 10451, which comes to 2680. Oh. Therefore m is 134. And that makes sense. If I've got four isotopes, 134 seems a very reasonable answer. So I can identify that the mass of this uh, isotope is 134 and it has an abundance of 20.0%. And once again, looking at significant figures, um, everything is in place to get me all the marks that I'm after. OK, and so finally, uh, we're going to have a look at a slightly more complicated example. Um, again, this has come from an AQA A-level paper. Once you have got your head around this, there really is nothing that they can throw at you that you're not going to be able to do. We're going to set it out in exactly the same way. So what do I know? I know that I've got three isotopes of strontium. I've got strontium-86, strontium-87, and strontium-88. In terms of working out their percentage abundances, well, this is where the exam board have made it a little bit more tricky. Um, I need to find the percentage abundance of strontium-88. I don't actually have the percentage abundances of either of the other two isotopes, but I do know that their ratio is 1 to 1, which means that if I, say, have 25% of strontium-86, I would also have 25% of strontium-87. So if I've got X percent, of strontium-86, I must have X percent of strontium-87. Percentages always add up to 100. So the percentage abundance of the strontium-88 must be 100 minus 2X. And then we can plug it into exactly the same expression that we have been using for previous examples. So for each isotope, I'm going to multiply the mass by the percentage abundance. So that would be 86 times X. We've got 87 times x, and then I've got 88, 100 minus 2x as my abundance. And all that comes to the relative atomic mass, which they've given us as 87.7. Once again, we're working in percentages, so we need to make sure that we have divided the left-hand side by 100. First step, let's get rid of that 100, so I'm going to multiply by 100 on both sides. It cancels on the left-hand side. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, let's just move that up a little bit. And on the right-hand side. So that leaves me with 86x plus 87x uh, plus 88. 100 minus 2x equals 8770. I can simplify out this part of the left-hand side. 88 times 100, 8800. 88 times 2x would be minus 176x. OK, so we've now got 86x, 87x, plus 
plus 8800 minus 176x equals 8770. Uh, the first thing I'm going to deal with next is to deal with the x's. So 86x plus 87x minus 176x comes to minus 3x. So minus 3x plus 8800 equals 8770. Okay, I'm now going to take 8800 from both sides and then I am left with minus 3x equals minus 30, so x equals 10. Okay, so what have I found out? I have found out that the percentage of strontium-86 is 10%. The value for strontium-87 is also 10%. So the value for strontium-88 must be 80%. And that is my final answer. Again, because I've set it out um, in this particular format, it makes it really straightforward at the end of the calculation to go back and figure out what it is I have actually worked out. Um, once again, um, the chief examiner was report um, says that very few students work their way through this calculation correctly. And yet the algebra is really very straightforward. And that comes from someone who, believe me, is not a mathematician by any shape, way or form. So learn this method, practice it, go back to your textbook, um, go through past papers. Um, once I get myself organised, there will be some worksheets available as well. And they are. I'll put the link in the um, description below.